if you weren't here, can I please ask you to make every effort to listen to Nigel's preach from the 2nd of September. It really sets the scene for where we are, the exciting things that God has been doing, just a sense of God awakening um, in, in us as a church, in the nation, and we, wanna, we want to ourselves as followers of Jesus get on board with what God is doing to be hungry and zealous for God in our own lives. Um, and it sets the scene brilliantly. In one sense, it's part one of today, if you like. Um, so please do make every effort to listen to that. We're at an encouraging moment as a church. There's lots to be optimistic about. And so this morning, I want to talk about painting. I want to talk about Swindon Paint Fest, in fact. I have a clicker. Ta-da! Oh, they are very low-res images, sorry. That's lastminute.com. Um, Swindon Paint Fest. I am sure that you, like me, have seen over the last couple of years, since 2022, each year these murals, I think that's fantastic, um, these murals, or murials as they get called in our home, um, popping up across the town, bringing joy, life, vibrancy. I've got quite a few, but I'll just keep talking. Um, and I love driving through Swindon. I love seeing the, the life, the vibrancy, the creativity, the art, the, the passion, the talent and skill that's being displayed in our town. And we can't do a journey across town without the kids, not the bigger ones, but the smaller ones these days, without that being another muriel. And every time it's the same one as, look, a muriel. And it's like, yep, we saw that yesterday as well. Um, but they bring joy. They bring life to the town. And I have been so thankful to the people who got hold, Swindon Paint Festival and all the others that organized and collaborated and worked together with this initiative, local authorities, and to, to bring Swindon to life in this kind of way. I'm so thankful that there's people who care about our town like this. Say, so come on, it should be a beautiful place. On, on Swindon Paint Fest website, they state this. Listen to this. This is amazing. It's Swindon Paint Fest, its objective is to initiate the development of murals, public art, and hold creative events as part of the regeneration of Swindon and enhancing the town centre. We aim to inspire the community, to provide a platform for artists, to be able to showcase their talents. Now listen to this. Back in the 1980s, Swindon became an unlikely murals capital of the UK. Did you know that? I did not know that. That's, I grew up in Swindon in the 80s. But it was the unlikely murals capital. Not Bristol. Not Manchester. Not London. Come on. Swindon. Yes. Who? Ah, what a great thing to be able to say. Ha, ah, Bristol. Right. And the town once boasted over 40 murals. Only legendary Ken White's 1976 Golden Lion Bridge, and I'm sorry I don't have a photo, but you know the one, and Sarah Faulkner's 1985 Arkles Brewery seem to be left. So it's become one of the key goals to put Swindon firmly back on the street art map once again. Yes. Yeah. Come on. What an amazing vision for a town. Come on, let's bring beauty. Let's bring life and passion and zeal and color into the place that we live. So we go along and kids go, look, murals. Isn't it an amazing thing that people get to say, we, we value art and creativity in our community, in our society. What an amazing thing. Isn't that a great, beautiful vision for this city? I'm going to talk about Swindon as a city because throughout history, Swindon is totally a city by every metric. And you know, that is precisely what we are called as followers of Jesus to carry in our heart. Maybe not paint on the wall, but I want to use that as the metaphor this morning. That we go make the place beautiful. We go take the presence of Jesus. We go and display it in the places that we live and work and in our homes and relationships and our serving of the town. It's a vision that each one of us should carry and enjoy the fruit of. And it's a vision for us that I want to call us as a church back to this morning. I want to 
invite us and ask us and, and conjole us and put your arm behind your back and twist it if it's needed to say it's something that is worth giving ourselves to Gateway Church, to put it afresh in front of us, to get hold of it by faith, to pray, to make plans, to resource, to send and to go for the sake of Swindon and beyond, of course. In fact, it's something that Emma and I have been wrestling with over this year. We felt like God put that question afresh in us earlier in this year. Colin, Emma, are you giving yourselves to who I've called you to be as a church with boldness and courage? And we've had to wrestle that and pray about it and work it through. And in our hearts before God, we've got to the point of going, yes, we absolutely want to give ourselves to, yes, this family, to loving one another, as we've heard over the last couple of weeks, but to say, come on, we're about something. We're about the kingdom of God in this place. We're about displaying his beauty, his life, his love, his light, his lordship in our community. And we're about something. And we just settled in before God in our heart. And maybe you have these moments too in life where you go, come on, let's go again. Let's go again. And it is one of those moments. I know it can sound very grand and it, words are easy. I get that. But I feel like where we are at as a church family, there's lots of exciting stuff which we'll just do a whistle-stop tour through in a moment, but church, can we go again? Yeah. We're saying, come on, we're about something. There's a kingdom that is worth living for. Amen. I think in reality, it's something that over the last four or five years, not just because of the pandemic, for a whole host of reasons, but I think it's something that has slipped from the way we think and talk as a church. It's slipped from our psyche, come on, we're about something. We've settled for the middle of the road, the low-hanging fruit, whatever way you want to look at it. Jude, um, our second son, he's studying languages. And every time he's in Swindon on a Sunday, he says, please stop talking in idioms and that that nobody understands. And so apologies once again. If English is not your first language, he will tell me off for this. Um, but it, we've settled for the safe kind of church. We, we have in our hearts. And I know we have because I've done that. I'm not saying everybody in this room has. I'm saying we have, I have. I've felt it. I've, I've just known it. I've not had the confidence in God, the confidence to call us, to galvanize us, to put our arm behind our back, say, come on, we've got to give to this resource, send, mobilize ourselves. But as Emma and I made that decision again earlier in the year, and it sounds so grand, it's a really simple thing. It's God, yeah, actually, do we feel peace and joy and faith for this task? God, you've got to put it in our heart afresh if we're going to do this. Lord, we want it to be something that shapes our life. It's not a clever thing. It's a simple thing. But as we've made that decision, in God, you feel that kind of mobilizing. Yes, come on. There's, there's things to do, people to send, resources to gather and, and bless this town with. And so we've kind of, in our hearts, made a recommitment to us as a church family and the church that God has called us to be. And we're here to see Swindon come to life in God. And God has called us as a church, really simply, to be a resource church to equip others and to enable others in the mission that God has called them to in and around Swindon, in and around Gateway. And we want to give ourselves to that. And that's what I'm asking. Would each one of us today, in these days, over this week, find time with God, say, God, Am I just going on Sunday? Am I just attending? Or God, am I actually committed into the vision that you have called us to? Our little part in our little corner of the UK. We don't want a bunch of people that turn up on a Sunday then go. That's not making the town beautiful. That's just self-serving. We want to be mobilized, faith-filled, exploit-pursuing followers of Jesus in our generation. That's what God is doing in the nation, by the way. There's incredible things right across this nation that God is doing in our very generation. Stuff we've prayed for for decades is happening in a move of God. And we've got to get hold of it and say, God, here too. Here too, in our homes, our marriages, our singleness, our workplace, our families, our friendships. God, come move in power in this place. I promise you we will get very messy in the process. I can't believe these people walk home at the end of painting these incredible pictures and are not covered head to toe or at least hands dirty in paint. But that's what God's called us to. That's what he's called us to. What a church. What a church. When you and I 
are seeking the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives to say, God, you've got me in this place. I just haven't rocked up in Swindon because I've rocked up in Swindon. You might feel like that. You might make plans for where you want to go and where you want to establish yourself, but God directs your feet. It's you and God. And underneath you, it's God anyway. And I want to say to you, you are here for kingdom purpose, Christian. You are not just in Swindon until you move on to the next place. That might be your plans. But while you're here, God has established you here. And we need to be brave as a church family to call ourselves back to that kind of galvanizing one another. Permission to speak into one another's lives. Say, come on, where's the kingdom working out for you? Uh, For Emma and I, we lived with a vision a long, long time ago. We had Sam when we were teenagers. We were like, we thought, we better get married. Mother and father-in-law just sat there. (laughs) And it's a joke. It's all right. A lot of water's gone under the bridge. It's all fine. Um, but when we made that decision actually we need God at the center of our marriage we need to honor him we started to talk about what's your vision for life and what's my vision for life which by the way if you're looking around for somebody and you're kind of going what kind of wife what kind of husband somebody who shares a vision for life is probably a good place to start somebody who loves Jesus and carries the same vision for life and one of the things that we both had a vision for is for fostering and adoption. And we are currently fostering. We have been for two years. And actually, back around 2020, a whole other story for another day, but we ended up putting it back in front of us again, saying, come on, it's time to press into that. Time to get hold of that. And part of that in our heart is, it's a wall that we feel God's called us to, to turn up and paint, to give ourselves to, to get our hands very messy in the process of it. And for us, that's a wall that we feel God has in our home, say, come on, paint this wall. We're not great at it. We're trying. We're learning. Just this last week, they've said we're allowed to continue, which is very good. Um, There's part of you that sometimes wants them to say, sorry, you're not good enough. Um, But but that's a wall that over this same season, we kind of feel like God's gone, come on, where are you turning up and making my kingdom be visible in your home, in your life? And so I, I just want to say to you, I'm not asking us for I'm not asking you of anything that we aren't already doing. And I don't mean we're great at that. I'm just saying we've settled some of this in our heart. And it's tough. That's the reality. And you know that. You don't need me to tell you that. That's page one of ten, just to let you know. Um, We will get the kids back in. Somebody will have some loaves and fish and we'll be fine. Um, Some of you... Well, remember, before the pandemic, uh, a year, six months before the pandemic, we had a friend of the church with us, a uh, prophet lady called Janet Brand Hollis. Um, hands in the air, if you remember. Okay. So many of you don't. Um, and she was with us, and she was a real... Honestly, I was nervous. <laughs> but she was such a blessing to us. She really was. And I, there was things that she spoke into us as a church and into our marriage, and for us, different people in this church, that God got hold of us and has led us over this season. And I really believe that. I was just thinking of um, how life-shaping prophets and prophecy can be, and I was thinking of a couple called uh, Steve and Millie Jones, who used to be part of Gateway earlier this week, and they felt like God had spoken to them about moving to Canada to go and plant church, be involved in, um, in, in this, in their community, painting in Canada, and they had um, lived with that, and a guy called Julian Adams, another prophet from our wide family of churches, was here in Gateway, and he prayed and prophesied over them, and he said, I I smell maple syrup, or something like that, and I smell maple syrup, and I see you going to Canada and being involved, and God had already put this in their heart. It was this amazing confirmation moment for them, and so up and off they went, and they said, we don't like Swindon's walls, there's walls in Canada that we want to go and paint, but God spoke to them about it. And Janet said to us as a church and as a team, I think she said this in the context of a team, she said, God is taking this house. We talk about family, but actually the biblical picture is that of household. God is taking this household into a new season. God is taking this household into a season of influence. The call on this house is to be of an influence, a strategic influence in this city. The call on this house is to build something that the local council can come to this house and say, 
We have found something here. Help us. What an amazing thing. She went on to say, oh, hold on. Aren't these great? Yeah, sorry, clickers and me don't work very well. It's even up on the screen here. And she said this, and I can see that God is going to establish in each one of your hearts just knowing that this is the place. That expectancy that God has got his hand on you and on this house and you are building in the right place in the right direction. There is going to come such a steadiness and strength amongst you. And sometimes when we receive prophetic words, it can, it can just be nice. We go, oh yes, great, thank you God. But they are something that we have to get hold of. Might not have time for that. <laughs> we need to get hold of them by faith. Prophetic words are like a, a picture of God saying, come on. I've called you to be like this. I want to help you see who I've called you to be. I want to help direct your steps and your plans. I want to lead you into what I've got for you. But church, we have to get hold of them by faith. Yes, personally. And as a community together. They should be shaping of who we are. And I'm so thankful to Janet that, that she spoke that into us. A steadiness. A strength. That will come amongst you. And I want to be honest, I don't think we've had that over the last four or five years. I don't think that would be something that I would say has defined us. That doesn't mean everything's been terrible. Go back and listen to Nigel's preach from the other week as he talked about coming into 2024. But I don't think that a strength and a security has been something that has defined us as a church household, as a family. And I want to say, as we've recommitted in God to say we're going again, a, a strength and a security in who God has called us to be is kind of like the rising water level in our hearts to say, come on, in our home, yes, in our marriage, yes, in our family, yes, in our friendships, yes, in our church family, absolutely, come on, God. New strength and security in you in this next season that we can give ourselves to what you've called us to be. So being very simple, we are not changing direction. This isn't an announcement of some new plan, some new thing. This is saying we are recommitting ourselves to who God has called us to be as a church that we want to resource every person in this town to turn up to the wall of the place that God has given to you to paint and say, come on, what does it look like? Clive and I were literally just talking before the meeting started and Clive was saying, in this context, it feels like of where we are, just society and all that's going on and the good things and the challenges, we need to equip one another to say, come on, how do we show up? What does it even look like to go and paint a wall for some of us? We're not changing direction, but we are recommitting ourselves to saying, come on, God has called us to something great in this town that I believe will reverberate on because one of the prophetic words for us that was right at the inception of Gateway was build locally, but think internationally. And it has been a word that has shaped us and it's a DNA word for us. As is true as it should be for every church, I realize that, but God spoke that to us and said, come on, build locally, but think internationally. It didn't just say think about nations over the sea. It said, think nations, ethnicities, and look what God is doing among us. God is already at work. What God is doing in Swindon, in terms of diversity of nations, what an amazing opportunity for the kingdom of God. And we've got to get hold of these afresh with confidence to say, come on, we need to give ourselves to these. Alongside that, we learned in lockdown, it felt like God was kind of saying, come on, he lifted the rug and went, what about discipleship? Growing, following, becoming like Jesus. It's an area we need to give ourselves to as a community. But not just, not just in a nice Christian way, because we're called to something. Not just to do the right thing, but because we are needing to be mobilized and equipped and say, God, get hold of this life. Get hold of this person for the sake of your kingdom. Shape my heart, Lord, for what you have called me to. What your kingdom looks like. I think that might be what God has been doing in this season. There was a prophetic word about God laying new foundations. In fact, Elizabeth Perry talked about a, a violent wind coming and kind of blowing over the house and showing the foundations and foundations needing to be re relayed. And Janet said something very similar to us. And I wonder that this has been a season of relaying the foundations. But now we need to see some of the building in this next season. And I want to call us as we do this, because it's very easy for churches to have, like people, we have attitudes, we can be cynical. 
We can be crazy. I'm not crazy, you know. Like, just out there, wild, with lifestyle. And I'm going, my brother and sister, my sister and brother-in-law, they sold up their home with their kids, and they moved to Bali and Thailand for nine months. And what a, what a just a oddball thing to do, eh? Anyway, and they, some of us are like that. And some of us are bold with decision-making, and some of us are a bit more timid, and some of us have loads of resource, and some of us don't have very much resource. And some of us are prayers, and some of us are, are readers of the Bible more. And, but God is saying, come on, whoever you are, whatever, whoever you are in this church household, in this family, whoever you are, you've got a part to play. But each one of us, we need to call us to be bold, confident, advancing, sending, receiving, resourcing, praying, faith-filled for this next leg. We need to change from how we've been. And I'm not trying to beat us up with that. I, there's seasons in life. There's seasons in God. There's seasons in church family where you have the up moments and the down moments. And that's good. That's normal life. But we're at a moment where we're seeing God move. We want to get hold of that. Now, just hear me. I'm not calling us in these next hour and a half to... Um, I'm not calling us to say, hey, everybody, this is codified language for, look, there's some more things that needs happening around Gateway. And if you could all give a bit more time to Gateway, that'd be really helpful. And then this would be a better local church. We're not trying to make Gateway famous. We're trying to make Jesus famous. We really are. And just Jason, as I went out um, in the foyer just before, uh, just a minute ago, Jason said, can I pray for you? And he said this amazing line that kind of encapsulated it for me. He said this, he said, as he was praying for me, I'm sure he's saying, Colin, remember this. We serve the Lord of the house, not the house of the Lord. We serve the Lord of the house. We're about Jesus' kingdom in this place. But we are a household. And it does need serving. And it needs galvanizing. And it needs saying, come on, Holy Spirit. Come fuel these hearts. Come show us the broken down walls that need repairing even before they can be painted. And that's where we are. You know, Swindon Paint Fest, if the artists don't show up, nothing gets painted. There is nothing visible that changes in terms of beauty in this place. And now, because they've started, they better not finish. We, Emma and I were in Marseille just um, a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, makes it sound like a very nice life. It was very nice. Um, but we were there, and we rocked up to Marseille. And Robert and he said, you should go to Marseille, you'll love it. And we did. But the first night we got there, it was late, we were tired, and we went out for a bite to eat, and we walked, we were in this kind of inner city area, and we started walking through the streets, and I'm not kidding, I should have put the photo up, there was street after street where every, the facade of every building, every house, every shop, even every van was covered, every square inch in graffiti, head to toe. It was this incredible place, it felt like this dystopian city at that point in the night as well, and we were like, oh, this is nice. Thanks, Robert and Anita. Um, and, but then we went the next day, and it was, this place was vibrant with life and color, and it was amazing. Anyway, why was I even saying that? Just talking about my holiday. Um, but if, if the artists don't show up, the walls don't get painted. I don't, there must have been a connection. I'll just move on. Hear me on this. When the church shows up, the walls get painted. They, it's the only way that the beauty and magnificence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who we have just worshipped, gets told, that story gets told to the city, is when we show up, is when we turn up, when we mobilize ourselves and saying, it's okay myself, God's promised, I don't have to worry, I don't have to store up for myself, because he's promised he's got everything I need so I can give myself to him. Church, it's a dangerous world out there, in the language of, was that Frodo, or Bill, or Samwise? Who said that? One of them. It is a dangerous world out there. Not that we should be fearful. I don't mean we should be fearful. But there's people who don't love the kingdom of God. There's people who aren't wanting the beauty of the kingdom of heaven. But here's the thing. The story is already written that Jesus' kingdom will be established in every square inch of Swindon and beyond. It's his. He's purchased it. The land, the ground is his. It belongs to him. And he said to us, go on, here's the paint. Go paint. Here's the resource. Go do it. Here's the walls. 
go tell my story. The good thing is this, no one of us can do it on our own, but we are called, nevertheless, to go and do the bit that God has given to us to do. We, Gateway cannot do all of it. You and I cannot do all of it. We are not the saviour of Swindon, but we point to the one who does and is able to and has said, I love you, I redeem you, I rescue you, I bring transformation of the kingdom of heaven into this place. That's the one we point to. Every mural of ours is a picture of Jesus. It's a picture of him. He's a true artist. He's the one who brings life and light and beauty. Now, I had this whole thing about Abraham, which I don't have time to go into. I'm going to put a link on our Facebook page. I, I, I nicked this bit about Abraham, by the way. Um, I had this whole thing about Abraham that I wanted to share. Uh, Nigel and I were at a, a, this event called Gather Summit, and Helen, sorry, earlier. No, I don't, yeah, you were there, Helen, at this one. And um, Nigel's best friend and fanboy moment, Gerard Kelly, um, who's a Christian poet and uh, speaker and this, that, the other. He was speaking on the story of Abraham and his vision for a city. That God spoke to him, let's just, we do this, and I'm not going to speak about it, I'm going to point you to it. By faith, uh, is that the start of it? By faith, Abraham, uh, Abraham, when he was called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And Gerard Kelly does this amazing um, short. It's only 17 minutes long, so you can listen to it. It's okay. It's a TED Talk length. And, and he does this amazing storytelling of this city that Abraham was captivated by. That he wasn't kind of thinking, we need to go off to heaven. He was looking for a city, a literal city. I'm not going to spoil it, but, but Gerard talks about how just before this, the context is that it's told the story of the city of Babel. And that he, Abraham is given this contrast of you can have the city of God and desire for that in your life and what that looks like, but you've got to leave behind the city of Babel. I will put the link on the website. That's freed me up of a whole, of, on Facebook and YouTube. That's freed me up of a whole amount of time. I'm so thankful um, for the technology we have. Um, Here you go, let's just read this bit. And so from this one man, as he was good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. That is the descendants. That is those who kind of shared Abraham's vision of a city of God. He didn't know it was going to be a new kind of Jerusalem, but the city of God, the dwelling place of God on earth. They shared that vision. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Church, that is what we are. It's why in John's epistles he says, do not love the world or anything in the world, because if you love the world, you're loving Babel, you're loving Babylon. And he's saying if you love Babylon, that is, that is life without God. It's the epitome of life without God, the pride of man, the pride of life that we can build to ourselves and make a name for ourselves. And he's saying, if you, if you love Babylon, you can't love God and the love of the Father isn't in you. It's not have a bit of this and a bit of that. It's Jesus or not. It's his kingdom or the kingdom of the world. You get to choose. That is, that is what you're following Jesus is. You've made a decision to say, okay, Jesus, you're Lord of my life. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what Jesus taught us to pray. To say, Jesus, your kingdom here. People who say, say such things show that they're looking for a country of their own. If they'd been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. 
And just in case you don't watch that video, that is not some floaty off place. That is heaven on earth. A renewed creation. God's throne, his dwelling place on earth. That is what we're building to. Recreation, new creation come, restored, redeemed. Wrongs put right, broken walls rebuilt for the glory of God. No inch with sin and evil and death and decay. But the life and vibrancy of God and and Jesus will be the light. And it was going to be all right. That's what we're building towards. Not a floaty thing just in case that's what you see. Anyway, listen to Gerard. It's really, really good. And it's really helpful and provocative. Another great piece of art. So Jesus said this, a city. This is from Gerard, but I just need to do this bit to set us up in our last couple of minutes. (laughs) Jesus said this, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Before that, he just said, you are the light of the world, by the way. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it it gives light to all in the house. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus has called us to be a city on a hill. Cities, as you'll see when you watch this video, are where people gather together in significant enough number that you, you, can, you start to see what the passion of people is, what the heart of people is. You can see by the city what it looks like. Gerard alluded to this. I, I'm sort of going through it in a bad way. Back in the day, before our skyscrapers, this is what London looked like. You could see what the passion of the city was by the skyline, by when people gather together, i.e. Babel, what kind of thing do people build? Let's build a name for ourselves. It's not that God doesn't like tall buildings, it's that he hates the pride of man, the hubris of humanity. That we're saying, we don't need God, we can make a name for ourselves, we can make ourselves look great. And so as people gather together, whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, literally as we gather together as civilizations and societies, in large enough numbers you begin to see what is important to people by the skyline of a city. And then, now, you can see what's important to us. Most of these buildings have something like HSBC, Citibank, Metro Bank, written on the side of them. Wealth, accumulation, money, greed, arrogance, pride. That's what's important to our society. And you and I have this decision to make. What kind of city are we giving ourselves to? Because you can go and paint the wall of your life and say, accumulation, wealth, my comfort, my this, my that, the other. God lets you do that. But be careful if you call yourself a follower of Jesus. Because it doesn't look like that for the follower of Jesus. Jesus says, no, no, if you're following me, brilliant news. You've got the gift of salvation, the free gift of God. Salvation, friendship with God, sin forgiven, reconciled, restored, brought into his family. But you've got to take up your cross. And now you've got to work for his city. You can't have both. And the city of God, just like Abraham, the city of God was more important for him, even though he didn't own a square inch of it. Even though none of it was his, the city of God was a vision he lived with. Church, I want to call us in this next moment. Can we be bold and courageous and confident to say we're giving ourselves to the city of God in this place, in in this household? in these homes, in these hearts, in these marriages and relationships and singleness and workplaces and school and education and healthcare and business and so on and so on. Can we give ourselves again, not to this, but to the city of God? Can we free ourselves from the values of the world and say, come on, what does it look like today to to magnify Jesus and to help us in our last couple of minutes? What another great picture. What another great picture. I'm going to teach us to paint. I am pleased with this. If anybody disses it, there's trouble. We are going to pray. And I don't just... Convenient, I know. Starts with a P. Goes with the whole metaphor, but you get it. We're going to pray. I want to call us to prioritize prayer. This is a slap wrist moment. We don't have many prayer meetings as a church. We don't gather that much to pray... We gather every Sunday, 9.15, in the Mary Jones room. You are welcome. That's when we start our mornings. That's when we get faith. That's when we stir ourselves saying, come on, God, these dusty hearts, these dusty lives, these messy people, Lord, we want to meet with you today. It starts at 9.15. Please come. 
We gather the second Sunday of every month, 7.30 here, just for an hour and a half to pray. We would gathered last Sunday, about 10% of the church rocked up to pray. That's not great, just putting it out there. Pretty disappointing. I know there's reasons. I know there's decisions and choices. But hey, if, if 10% of the painters show up, it's a slow job. Not many walls are going to get painted. Can I call us to get a vision for prayer? Not just to show up and pray, but to say, Lord, paint for us. Paint for us. Show us. Resource us. Enable us that we can go and turn up and present your kingdom come. If we are not praying and we are simply making our plans, what a waste of time. What an utter waste of time. We need to get before God. In fact, of that 10%, the good news is about 40% of that were our students and 20s. Which is even, you know, they're not here today, so well done those guys. Boo you lot, basically. That's just a polite way of saying it. That's the first step. We need to prioritize prayer. I'm putting my, I'm not having a go. I'm saying I need to prioritize prayer. I'm saying that is part of the recommitment. It's saying, God, recommitment means nothing if we don't get before you. This is your city, your people, your walls. We've got to pray. Can we call one another to that? Can we change our expectation, our diaries, our priorities? It is the work of prayer, but in it we meet with the living God. It's not a chore. It's it's the privilege we have of coming into his presence, saying, God, meet us again. Lord, here I am. Equip, send, resource, bless, encourage us. Next. Can we align our hearts? Did you like what I did there? That is a good one. What a great picture as well, by the way. Can you concentrate on what I'm saying rather than looking at the picture? Can we align our hearts? One of the things that when Janet was with us, she talked about every, every joint supplying. God bringing an alignment to this household that we need to say, yeah, we're about something. You see, we, we, we are about the kingdom of God, making Jesus famous, not making the name of Gateway famous. That really isn't the point at all. We are about something. And, but for us to find traction in that, we need to align our hearts together. And hopefully, every church in Swindon is about making Jesus famous. It's not we've got the inside track on that. It's not a USP. That's the job of the followers of Jesus. But there are things that God has called us to do, ways that he has called us to resource. And I want to call us, can we align our hearts and get behind that. I think that's one of the things that's got lost over this season. And for many of you who are new to um, Gateway over the last four or five years, I'm, that's fine. You're welcome. But it isn't just come and take a seat. It's come and align your heart. Say we're about something. It's been great that we've had Belong. And about half the church have been through it so far. But it is simply a stepping stone to say, basically, I'm going to give you the other version of Belong that we don't normally talk about. Basically, anybody that's put their hand in the air and said belong has given us a free ticket to say, right, what are you going to do about it? How are you praying? Why are you not at prayer meetings? Why are you not giving? Why are you not turning up? Why are you not serving? Why are you not using the gifts and skills and talents that God has given you to bless this place, to bless one another, to, to care for one another, to bless and care for Swindon? It's given us permission to come and say, come on. And so in a couple of weeks' time, I'm not putting the date on that, at some point, hopefully this year, might be next year, No, at some point soon we want to write a letter to those that have gone through Belong and said, yep, I belong, to say, come on then, what does it look like? Say, come on, where do we need to talk to you? How how can we help you? How can we provoke you as leaders to say, come on, it should look like something. So expect a letter, it won't be happy. (laughs) Um, But it was never just a few tick boxes. It wasn't just to kind of go, oh, I wonder who's with us, how many people are really with us these days? Brilliant, good thing to know. But, no, come on, we're about something. Can we have your hearts? And you can have our heart, and we need to love one another and be close as leaders and elders and the body and have a relationship where there's a sense of we're together. That's so crucial for the local church. But we want to ask you to give your time, skill, money, to give yourself into who God has called you and us to be together. And we want to do this unashamedly because those walls are waiting to be painted. And if it feels like an arm behind the back, that's maybe not a bad thing. I am aware of the time. This is the good one. I want to call us as a church family to invest. The walls being painted, I was thinking about this just this week. 
I wonder who supplies the paint. I wonder who covers the fuel cost. I wonder who donates their wall and says, yeah, you can paint my wall. I have no idea what you're going to do. I hope it's nice, but I wonder who provides all the tools necessary. I wonder who gives their time. In fact, we know somebody who gives their time, Kaz's brother, who gives their time to create beauty in this place. There ain't a free lunch. <laughs> We've got to invest. We've got to give. We've got to tap these pockets and go, what are they about? Are they about the city of Babylon? Or are they about God's kingdom? How do we use our money? How are we thinking about that? Just a couple of things to say into this. Giving so far this year, um, from April to August, is 3%, 3.5% 3 down on the same time last year. So giving is actually down at the moment, just to make you aware. This isn't to have a go. I just want you to be aware. Um, and we're currently under budget at the moment, at this point in the year, partly because we're over budget on expenditure, which is always a fun thing. Um, so our finances as a church are, you know, they're going the wrong way in that they can't stay that way. And we need you to know that. And just to say, we've budgeted this year for 385,000 to come in. That's, there's, other, there's other pockets of finance and different things uh, that, where money comes in through different routes as well. But that's our budget for this year, 385,000 pounds. Just FYI, we made a jump on last year's budget from 355,000 pounds. So we've made a decision to say, yeah, we, we're going to go for faith. Even as we came into 2024, you know, as we close down the furniture project, and that cost a lot of money, a lot of our reserves as a church, there's another problem. If somebody wants to donate £150,000 to put them up, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, but we kind of felt like, no, actually, we haven't got a load of traction at the moment. Therefore, we need to increase what we're calling us to as a church in terms of giving. We're not just going to wait until everything's nicely and neatly packaged. We're going to say, no, by faith, we're going to trust that God will provide. That God as we are, seek to be good stewards of the money that God gives us, and as you guys faithfully, and thank you for every penny that is given to this church in faith where money is trusted, I genuinely say that. Thank you so much. But if we're going to give ourselves to what God has called us to, we need finance. And we need more money. And we're going to actually need a whole load more money than we get right now. We are playing in the shallow end. I just want to put it like that. It's It's... It's tight. There's nothing exciting in terms of finances. You know, good stuff happens, but I want to call us boldly to say, come on, church. Let's not play fast and loose with God with our money. Let's trust the one who has all the resource with our finances that we can give to him and trust him, both in the local church and to other things and to other need as God shows you. And I just want to, again, I want to talk about myself and Emma just very briefly. Not that we've got this perfect. I am, we are a work in progress, but this is how it works for us. In case you need help with this, we would love to talk to you. This isn't just a budgeting exercise. This is a faith thing. Please talk to us as leaders about our money and how we give. You are more than welcome to do that. But we set aside 10% of our gross income of everything that comes into our home, money-wise, to give to Gateway. That is where we are at. Gross. Before tax, before the government, God. We've made that decision that has shaped us. We've done it in times when that's hard and times when it's felt easier. But that's our starting point of giving. On top of that, we're seeking every year to give another 10%. I think last year we ended up doing 18% in total. We've, I've had this amazing year. I've tracked every single penny of our money. Um, and it was about 18.3% that we gave of our money. And another 8.3% we gave away to special offerings to people, circumstances, situations as God led us. In fact, we were both looking at um, the Bible Project website. What an amazing resource. If you want to go to Bible College, they've got this classroom that is just like Bible College. It is absolutely fantastic. And they said, we've, this basically, you can have a Bible College education for free. And they said, we've done it because it's already been paid for. And as soon as um, Tim Mackey said that, I thought, we need to give to this because it's blessed me, it's blessed us, and I believe in it. And so that's, not our that's, a different, that's from a different pot than our initial 10%. That's our over and above. Um, and so we seek this year to give 20% of our gross income to God and his kingdom. I am not saying that for boasting. I am just saying that is what we have set in our heart. I am calling you to nothing different to than 
we have called us to ourselves and that we do ourselves with our money. If we want to be serious about salvation, we've got to be serious what we do with our pockets. It's not we buy it, we don't buy it, we don't earn it, but we say, Lord, we want to trust you in every area of life, every square inch of this life, every square inch of this marriage and this home, Lord, we want it to be yours for your glory. Church, can I call us? I'm not saying you have to jump there overnight. It might not even be that you jump there. It might be that you're already way beyond it. It might be that you can never make it those numbers work. It's not about that. I'm just saying, can we be faith-filled with our finances so that we feel it and we go, this is for you, God. This sacrifice is worth it for your kingdom. It's gone very quiet, probably because I was meant to finish by now. Oh, dear. There's one thing I want. Okay, kids. They're fine for a minute. They're coming in at 12. Just to say, on finance... We have a special offering coming up on next Sunday and then the following Sunday for the new interns that have just started and Burundi. We have three new interns. This office now is like going back to senior school on a Tuesday. It is remarkable. Um, But what a blessing the interns, Joel and Sandra, have been to us over this year. What an absolute blessing they have been and the life and joy and the motivation. And uh, hear my heart on this, but they young years passion and expectation of what the kingdom of God looks like we need that in abundance we need that they have been a blessing to us and every penny given to fuel those guys in this year has come back tenfold I'm convinced of it and will continue to do so but we want to go again because we actually want to invest in the next generation that was something as we came out of lockdown and looked around at the desert wasteland it's a bit like today where are the students in 20s well then with God and with one another for the weekend brilliant because of the fruit of this not just interns, but because of the fruit of saying, come on, we need to prioritize the next generation. And we want to go again. We want to establish a way of being. And I don't, I'm not saying for every year, we, we don't want this to be the one thing that every year after year we come back and go, right, next batch of interns. We want to make this something that works for us. Because there's other stuff we need to give into. There's other things we want to do. But we are going for it again with the interns and with Burundi. Just to say, Donna's going to be with us next weekend. Um, sharing her story of how God's worked in her life and led her. It's an amazing story, just really passionate. Not only that we hear about Burundi, but we also hear Donna's own story of what God's done um, in her life. And so we want to continue to sow into these things at this point. So please come ready to give. Again, please look at your money. How do you use it? Set aside money in your heart for the purposes of God in us as a church in your life. We, I want to put a target for us next Sunday that we want to shoot for 35,000, come on, that is easy for us. That is not a stretch. And then we've done those two things. And then next spring, we're going to come back and say, come on, there's a special offering again. We've got to get into the habit and joy of going, we're giving, we're giving, we're giving. This should not be a stretch. This is an easy target for us. And I want to put it in front of us to say, can we, church, rise to that quickly then? Every one of us is to take a next step continually, not just once, Not just, oh, I came to Gateway and then I found my way and I got in a small group and served in this area. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, can we take a next step of saying, Jesus, what next? Where next? Who next? How next? Lord, help me walk with you. Can we get our spirit-led selves partnering with Jesus in this money? And then finally, can we turn up? Can we turn up and paint walls? Can we actually be those kind of people that say, for the sake of that city coming here in Swindon, that Jesus asked us to pray for, we're going to turn up. I'm not talking about making Gateway work. I don't really care if Gateway doesn't work that well, if it doesn't function that well. I'm sorry, sometimes our small groups won't be great. Sometimes our communication won't be great because what we want to do is mobilize and send and equip one another and call one another to say, come on, let's turn up. Wherever we are, let's turn up with passion and joy and zeal for the sake of the king and his kingdom as his representatives in this town. So when we gather together, on Sunday mornings, can we turn up ready to worship and pray at quarter, no, at quarter to ten? In fact, at quarter past nine, can we turn up with an expectation we're going to meet the king? When we gather in our homes or for coffees with one another, can we turn up ready to encourage one another in life and in faith to challenge one another? Say, hey, what does this look like for you? Where are you painting? Can we turn up to our marriages saying, come on, let's love the Lord together with all our heart, mind, body, and soul? Can we turn up to our friendships, in our children, in our workplaces, in school, in education, in where we, in our streets, and turn up ready to say, we've got the paint. We're not quite sure what this is going to look like, but we just start. I'd love to have a go at doing a mural. I do not know what would happen, but it would be fun, wouldn't it? 
Can we turn up? And by way of finishing, now this will be fast. We are already turning up. It's not like people aren't turning up. I'm not saying we, nobody's turning up. We are. But can we align our hearts? Can we pray? Invest? Get before God? Each one of us growing in God, taking the next step so that when we turn up, we know the Holy Spirit is fueling and enabling us. Listen to some of what turning up looks like for us. Painting walls in this city at the moment. Safe families, I hope you know safe families. I hope you've heard it enough. Serving families in crisis in Swindon. Stopping children going into the care system actively is making a difference. Hear these stats. This is the UK impact of safe families a year. 1,500 plus families connected in each year. Meaningful connection. 10,813 uh, 10, bed nights of hosting. That's kind of like the light version of foster care. of Saying, look, come on, our home's open to care and give people respite. 23,147 children are benefiting through the work of safe families across this nation. That is an astounding thing, but not just, not just a service, but people showing, displaying, painting the love of Jesus into their life, bringing hope and joy into hardship and brokenness. And well done, Gateway. 30 volunteers. I love it when Helen sends through what the latest number of volunteers is. 30 volunteers from the church are turning up and painting a wall in families' lives across this town. That's amazing. But some of you go, yeah, families is my passion. Helen's right here. Come and put your name down. At least pray. At least give. At least say, I could probably do that and have a bit of time. What an amazing thing. In fact, is there a, is there a safe families vision like coming up, Helen, on the 30th? 30th of September. Please speak to Helen. There's a safe families, home for, home for good, vision night. Um, she can tell you that. Sorry, not time for that. 30th of September. Then, way with Sam. Sam, we need to do an update soon, but Sam mobilizing a vision of what painting the walls of young people's lives right across this town. Hard to reach young people. People that are on the margins. People who are um, self-harming and hurting and broken and suffering violence. People who just don't know what to do next in their life and are struggling with that incredibly difficult 17 to 25 year point in life. Sam painting a this amazing picture of what it looks like when the church is mobilized and turns up and brings blessing to the lives of young people. And already there's fruit. I don't have time to tell the story, but Sam will do an update soon. That will be good. Investing into the next generation, as I said, we felt we need to put the next generation in gateway in, at the front of the boat, so we need to prioritize that. Oh, parents, you don't want to go. Don't listen to it. Um, it's a lie. And all the... Uh, uh, just hear me on this. The blessing of what is happening among our young people isn't because we came up with this idea we should have interns and put the kids at the front of the boat. It's because some mums in Gateway decided we're going to pray for our young people and faithfully and regularly gather on Zoom and pray. They started with the beginning of paint. And the impact is we have young people now who are going to New Day who are gathering as students and 20s with Jesus at the center and are talking life and faith and mobilizing one another. We haven't had so much life in our young people in a very long time. Next one, unity. We have the privilege, I have the privilege of leading the Good News for Swindon network of churches. It's emptying quickly. Um, we have a monthly leaders prayer breakfast. Just so you know, next month, in the middle of the month, I'm not giving you the date because you're not invited, I'm sorry, but we're hosting a meal here at Gateway for leaders of churches and Christian organizations across the town with the sole purpose of building relationships among leaders of breaking down walls of division, of helping people find one another, make meaningful kingdom connections. And the good thing is, you all have a part in it. You can't turn up and eat, but we are bankrolling that as a church. This is the fourth one we've done. It's been hugely significant for us. God is on the move around unity in this nation. He is doing something as churches are finding one another and kind of going, man, these, these guys love Jesus as well. We should really partner together for the sake of his kingdom and love one another as he called us to. God is blessing that. Just to say, one of the fruit, I'm going to finish with this. One of the fruits of that is that you will remember, hopefully, some of you won't be aware, that we planted a church with um, Discovery Church, Freshbrook Church, and others into the heart of Penn Hill about uh, six years ago now, Nigel? Something like that. Um, that Tom Price and David Charles Clark are leading. And that has been such a joy to partner with others and see a, a church community established, 
To see a church plant become a church. To see it blessing a place. Tom messaged us, Nigel and I, the other week because they're, they're um, David Charles Clark is going to two days employment, not to be busy doing numbers and that kind of thing, but to bless and pass to the community. And Tom said this in his email. He said, we continue to give thanks to God for you both, oh sorry, for you both and the church at Gateway for their encouragement and support in this. And all the other ways that you support us, you are a real blessing to us. And I want to say to you, that is our heart to enable others, to resource others. He went on to say, the church, talking about Penn Hill, is continuing to see God's hand at work in Penn Hill. Indeed, we have a baptism coming up in mid-October for three new believers. Also, I was really encouraged the other day because feedback we have received from Sevenfield School is that they have really noticed the change in a family that had been a challenge to them until recently. But they clearly recognized the impact of the church was having on this family and the changes that they had seen in them and the children. I think I'm encouraged most because at the beginning, when we talked about one of the aims behind the work in Penn Hill, it was to hopefully impact the educational aspirations of families in Penn Hill. I can tell you that this is happening and that there is not only clear evidence of it, others outside the church are seeing it also. Praise the Lord for his faithfulness. What an amazing email. And our part in that is not just us, by the way, but our little bit of it is just to say, can we help? Can we support? Can we finance? We are financing. We're giving to it. We want to support. We have a great relationship with Tom and Suzanne and, and David and Anna Rett. And as a team, we just met before the summer. We had a meal together as they shared the story of what's happening. They have so many stories of people encountering Jesus. And we, at the end of the meal, we're like, we need to do this again. There's other places in Swindon where we need this to happen again. Um, are you saying stop? Oh, okay. Sorry. There's more. Um, and there's loads more happening across the church. And I'm going to finish with that. I hope you get the point. You are welcome to now stand up. I'm not even going to pray. You're welcome to stand up, grab a cup of coffee, speak to somebody new. Thank you for being here. Church, can we paint this town with the love of Jesus? Let's go for it.